Hey peeps, welcome back to Project Anonymous and in today's video, we're going to give you an easy guide in making a patch. So let's get to it. So we've done many different patch videos in the past, but they're all more complicated shapes and they might be a little bit harder to understand for beginners in embroidery. So we've got comments asking for us to do a video like this. So here it is. Yeah, and we're just going to do a simple basis of a patch, like all of the kind of basic steps that you'll need to do to make any kind of patch that you want, and you can customize it from, from that point on. Uh, but this is really just going to be the, the building blocks mm -hmm. of making uh, a patch. And we're even going to put Velcro on the back because a lot of people put Velcro on the back of their patches so they can stick it to things. Yeah. Okay, so we loaded Inkscape. We're on our 4x4 four four hoop template. Yep. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to make a nice little rectangle patch. Um, we'll do like three and a half by like two or somewhere in there. Just whatever looks good. Um, I mean, we can make like a name tag or something out of it. But uh, again, it's, we're just doing a basic shape mm -hmm. to kind of show the process in making a patch that you can put Velcro on uh, versus the actual shape or design itself. The building blocks. The building blocks. So you can exactly. take our guide with anything you want. You could do any animal, anything. Right. So we're just going to start with the little uh, rectangle thing. We're going to start in this corner, put on the zero, zero point, and we're going to use the little measurement tool or bar, whatever this is up here. And we're going to come up with a three and a half by inch and a three quarters. So we'll call it that pretty good right there. Okay. The first thing we're going to do is um, we're going to get rid of the stroke. So we're going to hit shift there. And this is going to be our fill stitch, right? And I think what we want to do is we want to make our fill stitch black. So I'm just going to hit the little black there. And then we want to kind of round the corners. And what we found is when making patches, having sharp corners makes it a little bit more difficult in getting a good wrap with a satin stitch. So we're going to grab this little circle here in the corner and just drag it down. You can see how that changes the shape. So we're just gonna give it a nice little fillet around each of the corners. I think that's pretty good right there. And then that's gonna be our fill stitch. So that's gonna be layer one. So that's really important here is making sure that we build into layers mm -hmm. so that we can kind of control the, the flow of steps. Yeah, and sometimes this can be a confusing number of steps, so this will kind of help you like visualize how this will border. Yeah, and keep yourself organized mm -hmm. in a way so that, again, your layers will build in your machine as well. There are some projects that you may want to combine all of the similar colors into kind of one step so you don't have to change the thread as much. Uh, when you're doing stuff that have orders of operation involved, like you need to actually change a bobbin color thread or you need to change something about the physical material, putting it into layers will, again, help so that you can kind of control the, the chaos of each step. So that's kind of how we're going to organize it. So we're going to go ahead and build a layer here and we're going to rename this Fill Stitch. Okay. And then we might as well go ahead and add a layer. And then, I mean, we might as well set up all of our layers now, right? So our next layer will be our satin edge. And then our last layer is going to be locking down our Velcro. Running stitch. Yeah, so we'll call it the running stitch. That's it. So that's going to be all of the layers that we work off of. And this is important because if you want to visualize your steps in Inkscape, it, we can turn these on and off and then we can see each layer as we build and build. It might even help to make all your layers first so you can kind of just go through each layer and then make each step. Right, absolutely. So for instance, right now our next layer would be adding text, but I'm really going to work on the other pieces of this first because all I have to do is duplicate mm -hmm. this shape and then we can change it to to meet our whatever we want to do right so for this one i'm just going to hit command d to duplicate control d on a window system and then now i have a copy duplicate of it and it didn't move right so instead of command c command v and it moves it off and you'd have to worry about lining it up perfectly um, 
by hitting Command-D, it puts it exactly where it needs to be. And I'm going to hit Command-Z right now to undo that move. And now it's right where it needs to be. And this, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, change it to, we'll call this one our satin edge. So obviously I want to give it a stroke. So I'm going to hit shift and pick my stroke color. And you can see that there. And then I'm going to get rid of the fill, right? So it looked like nothing happened, but if I hid my fill stitch layer, well, this is still on the fill stitch layer. So I actually need to move it to the appropriate layer. So let me right click on that, move to layer, satin edge. Right, so now I can hide my fill stitch layer and you can see just my little uh, satin edge right there. And we can, what do you think, that's too thick? It's probably a little too thick. Let's, let's thin it down just a little bit and we can do that in the fill and stroke area. You can see right here, we can either type it in or just hit the plus and minus skip to where we need to go. We'll go with this for now. Again, this is how you can adjust it to however uh, thick you want it to be. And again, this is, of course, is going to be a straight line, but we are going to make some adjustments here. What we have learned with uh, some previous videos about converting this to a satin will get a better result uh, because a stroke is just a zigzag stitch. Yeah. This we want to convert to a satin. So we can do that by selecting it and going to extensions ink stitch, satin tools, and then convert right. line to satin. And if you want to see more differences between satin stitches and strokes, we have a full video covering that. So. Right. So you can see the difference here. If I go back to layers and turn back on my fill stitch, this is what it looks like right now. And again, it doesn't look like too much here in this view, but if we went to stitch this out, you could see uh, what the final product would look like, but we're not done yet, right? Uh, so we're going to go back into our fill stitch layer and you can see it highlighted our fill stitch and we're going to hit command D again. And now we have a copy of that again, and we're going to move this to our running stitch layer. And this is going to be our running stitch. So again, it's like a stroke. Mm -hmm. uh, we do want it to be black. So we're going to hit uh, shift black and then we're going to hit X to get rid of the fill. And I, I'm going to turn off some of these layers so you can see what we're doing here. The nice thing about running stitches is it doesn't really have any trouble going around corners because it's like a dashed line. So it will always give a good result going around corners. Right. So I turned off all of the other layers so we're just focused on this. And the running stitch, again, we do need to turn into a dashed line like Megan said. So we're going to change it to a dash line. Let's pick one there. And I am going to redo this significantly. There, that's, that's pretty good. So you can see that this is just going to be a running stitch all around the project, but there is a problem with it. We do need to shrink this up a bit. And I'll, I'll explain why. This is going to lock down our Velcro on the back after the entire project is done. We're going to put the Velcro on the bottom side of our hoop and this is just going to stitch around the patch to lock down the Velcro to the back. So this is kind of the last step, but we don't want it to go right into the middle of our, our satin edge. So you can see right now it's right in the middle of our satin edge. We want it to be on the inside of our satin edge uh, so that it doesn't kind of mess with mm -hmm. that the satin. Look. Yeah. It will kind of mess up the look since this is the last step. So, we can just shrink it up a bit. You have to mess with this a little bit. Just a little bit. Again, I think that's actually pretty good right mm -hmm. there. What do you think? Yeah. So again, with very little work, we've already come up with a blank canvas of a patch, right? I'm going to turn back on all my layers and there we go. So now we can, we can actually work on whatever text we're going to do. We're going to go to lettering tool. Just text? Yeah. So we'll hit apply and quit. So this just kind of acts as our design for the patch. Yeah. And this text is going to be... Um, green. Green, right. So make sure we highlighted it and we're going to go ahead and hit 
shift green because this is technically a stroke. Mm -hmm. And then we can move it into place. Just like that, we've made the basis of a name tag and then we've added kind of a name to it, which is just text mm -hmm. uh, for the purposes of demonstration. But we do need to move this to our layer text. So just to recap, here's the order of operations. First, we're going to do the fill stitch to lock down our felt on top of a fixed stabilizer. And that's going to be in black. Yeah. The next step is adding your text, which this can be anything for you. This will just be our design for the patch. Then we're going to add the satin edge along the border. And then lastly, we're going to do our running stitch. And we just turn this red for the purpose of you guys being able to see this, but this is just going to lock down the Velcro. And it's going to be in black. Mm -hmm. Okay, you ready to get embroidering? Yeah. Okay, so we have all of our materials here. Um, the first thing that we'll talk about is choosing the right stabilizer for a patch. We have found that using a tearaway stabilizer is actually a bad thing with patches simply because you've got that satin edge around the border and it ends up like kind of cutting through the stabilizer, kind of making it so that your patch uh, may not be stable within there. So not the right stabilizer, obviously, but we have found that a nice um, mid-weight stabilizer is actually pretty good. That's not tear away. Uh, so we will actually have to cut this off uh, at the end of it, but that's okay. The next thing that we'll talk about is uh, using the right materials for the kind of the base. And uh, we have found that craft felt is actually really good for patches because there's a little thickness to it, um, which helps kind of keep it flat so it doesn't kind of like bunch or bubble up at all. Uh, so we, we like using felt. Now, specifically, we like using the, the felt color that matches the satin edge. And the reason for that is because we have to cut this, this excess felt off of our patch. And it's super helpful when we do cut that off that the edge showing isn't some random color uh, yeah. around the edge. So this is uh, kind of important for us that we make sure we use the right felt color that matches our satin edge. And then lastly, uh, our piece of Velcro that's gonna end up being on the bottom of our hoop after that's all stitched out. Um, and we, we use this, uh, we use the rough side of the Velcro because both patches uh, use the rough side on the patch itself so that you can kind of put it on the patch wall or, or whatever the case may be. But that's pretty much it. So we'll get to hooping and we got our little four by four hoop there. We'll put our stabilizer down and then just hoop it. Let's go to the machine. So we did have a problem in that our uh, thread got caught because we used the wrong like holder for the type of thread we were using. So it ended up pulling here, which caused the bobbin thread to come up top, which is why it looks white there. So what we're gonna do is before we add the Velcro to the back, we're gonna go ahead and redo this part of the green, which should just stitch on top of this. And hopefully it will turn out okay, but we gotta fix that. So we're gonna do that right now. Perfect. So we just redid that one letter and it turned out pretty good. So we're gonna press on. And we're gonna start by just, we found to get a cleaner look, we're gonna change the bobbin thread to black so it kind of blends in with our Velcro. So we're gonna go and change our bobbin. So this is the back side, and we're going to try to use the tape to pull this down. So we use black thread so it kind of disappears into the Velcro a little bit. Yeah, you can barely see it on camera too. Yep, so we're just going to cut around it, kind of clean that up.
So the next thing we're going to do before we continue on is we're going to put some of that uh, stitch dressing along the edge. This is kind of like a super glue for thread. This is going to hold things in place. And then we'll just let that dry for a minute. Okay, so I hope this video could help you in some way, just if you're looking for a simple guide to make a patch. And you can just make this as complicated as you want or as simple as you want. Yeah, we've done videos on patches before, but again, this is more about the process mm -hmm. and the steps involved, or at least the ones that we take to get the best results that we can out of our machine. Pretty decent results for us. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like it if you liked it. Like it. Subscribe if you enjoy our content. Subscribe. And turn on those notifications so you get my every single time we post a video. Stay crafty. And be happy. Bye.